Welcome everybody to the Dropbot Podcast. Here we invite ambitious, curious Dropbots, rebel, outsider, underdog. We discuss their journey to fight themselves, to build, to create, to grow, their challenge, their learnings, their advice. We will talk about unconventional choice, relationship to work, to education, and more generally, we will discover the lives and lessons of people who have decided to forge their own paths. Uh, today we welcome Arjun. Arjun is a young robot I met on Twitter. I follow his writings, his video, his interview, and his tech adventure when he helped Naval and Brian Nogart in developing AirChat application. So I'm very happy to get you on this podcast. Arjun, how are you, mates? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. It's very a pleasure. Uh, for those who don't know you, could you introduce yourself maybe in like one minute? Sure. I'm Arjun. I'm working on AirChat, which is a new social media platform that's designed to um, have high that's designed to have high quality conversations on the internet. And uh, we want to connect people from all over the world and have free and civil conversations. And I have a blog and a podcast like you do now. And <laughs> yeah, I like to talk about epistemology and um, philosophy of science, history, entrepreneurship, and other kinds of things. Okay, crazy, crazy. I will put all your links below for people who want to know more about your content and, and yourself. Um, I would like to uh, to start with something very simple. I want to start talking about you, talking about like your journey as a, a curious and ambitious robot. I want to talk about your childhood, your childhood, and I want to start by uh, asking you something very simple. What kind of child were you were? Like you were young? Were you the handy man, the popular kid? What was like your childhood? Um, so that's a great question. My, uh, yeah, it's weird where you even begin with childhood, you know, because technically I'm still a child. Uh, maybe we're all kind of a young. <laughs> yeah, we, we all are. Um, but I guess like when I was uh, eight or nine years old, or uh, even a little bit older, I was very much into cricket, which everybody may not know about, but it's similar to baseball if you're in America. I was really into cricket, but then I I, I thought I was going to be a cricketer and I was very ambitious in that field. Um, mm -hmm. But then COVID happened and then there was a whole um, break in uh, in cricket for me. Then I I was kind of like very confused about what to do uh, in life. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> having a kind of really didn't know what the future direction would be like. People were mm -hmm. telling me that you need to figure out what you want to do in life. Um, okay. And the pressure from there. But... Then I uh, started reading a lot of self-improvement books. I got into, like, the concept of entrepreneurship really baffled me. I really thought that you, you, you know, uh, if you wanted to get rich, you would do this by, like, either becoming a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, or something like that. Um, but when I learned about, like, you know, the kind of the most richest people in the world, they're not those things, right? They're entrepreneurs, they're creating businesses, they're creating value for society. So I, I really got into this idea of entrepreneurship. Then I started um, my own blog and I started sort of having an online presence. Um, cricket was sort of, uh, it sort of went behind and I just started this whole uh, different game. Okay. It started falling in love with ideas. Although I'm still like very physically active, I, I'm in mm -hmm. the long distance running now. So you were more like the sportive and uh, like sport passionate guy. Uh, you wanted to make a career around cricket which is the equivalent to uh, soccer in Europe or the football, uh, American football in the uh, USA. You're from India, right? Yes. So yeah, cricket is very popular here. And you wanted to, to do your career here. So you you, you were like, very ambitious. Uh, you were like also like this kind of hard worker kid or you were like this kind of talented kid? Sort of both. So I had a good height for mm -hmm. like being a fast bowler and also like really worked hard because it was something that I was really passionate about back then. I think those are an element of both of those. Um, yeah. But, like, besides that, I think I was, like, pretty much just, uh, like, in terms of school and everything else, I was pretty much a normal kid. You know, I would uh, mm -hmm. seek popularity, which now I realize was sort of, like, not the best thing to do uh, in <laughs> my years at school. Um, but I would seek popularity, you know, play video games um, when I was mm -hmm. playing cricket and uh, just do what normal teenagers do. Yeah, I, I get it. Okay, and so how and when did you start experimenting new thing outside of the cricket? You told me about your blog, Uh At what age did you start this, and uh, 
how did you went to create your own blog and start like experimenting things online? Yeah, um, that was in, uh, so that was because of uh, COVID, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, because I wasn't going to school every day and I wasn't <laughs> exposed to these, uh, to the same group of people every day had I gone to school, um, you know, I sort of took a step back and like I wasn't exposed to the same ideas every day to have like, you know, you have to get good grade. Whatever the general environment was at school, I wasn't exposed to that. So I had a lot of time to think on my own, which I wouldn't have had had I gone to school. So that's when I like I, I picked up on self-improvement books. I had this one mm -hmm. friend in my um, kind of building area and mm -hmm. he introduced me to entrepreneurship actually. And then we would just discuss and bounce off ideas each other like an intellectual sparring partner. Um, and so yeah, like after during COVID, like I really started to see things differently than I was before, and yeah. that really um, like changed a lot of things for me. Uh, then mm -hmm. when I went back to school, I was like, I just can't handle the school. So eventually, I dropped. Okay. So you you think that changing uh, your environment, changing also like the people you were hanging on in your daily journey, was something that creating or maybe referencing this feeling of, oh, I maybe don't belong to it anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't think I ever belonged to it. So you asked me about like, you know, what I was mm -hmm. like before uh, in my childhood and stuff. Um, I, I always felt like this isn't the thing for me, you know, like deep, deep down, like even though in the moment I was like, oh, I need to be in this group together. Like, I think like a part of me was always like, you don't really belong here like yeah. you know you, you can do other things it's <laughs> not the best use of your time um yeah. but so a lot of people you know talk about um so that, that if you homeschool your kid then socialization becomes a problem mm -hmm. i think it's the opposite like if you're going to school then like that's not the best place for socialization because you're sending your kid to a kind of like a place where they're forced to socialize with a group of people Right. It's not that by their consent, they're meeting people like we're talking right now. Nobody's forcing yeah. it, you know, do this conversation. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's more fruitful if people, you know, just experiment, even experiment with other people and not be, be other, uh, like, you know, keep making it. Yeah. But when you're like in school, like you're kind of forced to be around the same group of people every day, sometimes you're forced mm -hmm. to sit with the same person. Uh, you can't in the school I was in like you couldn't choose the partner you were going to sit next to so sometimes that was okay. the case I completely related to your point I think it's a kind of like um, a closed mind socialization where everyone thinks the same thing because it's like what you need to think to be like uh, on the norm and not to be like the, the strange kids people will not want to hang out with etc when we are kids you know we are very like uh, naive in some point when you put like someone in this environment, it's not going to, he's not going to be able to choose his type of group, to choose the people he wants to discuss with, to debate, etc. And so I definitely get your points. So for you, like going online, meeting the people you wanted to meet, discussing with the people you wanted to discuss, uh, was very like something that bring you maybe uh, knowledge, bring you like uh, wisdom, bring you like um, insights. Yeah, I would say so. Um, it really opened a lot of... So I think you're right about the closed socialization thing. There was this whole world of different ideas that I just wasn't aware of. And uh, then I started to discover all these people and have conversations with them. And then I sort of felt like these are the people that I want to hang out with. Or these are the ideas that I want to um, imbibe or think about. So yeah, I'd say that. And you mentioned when uh, intellectual body, uh, it was from your high school, your college, it was from your city, or it was someone from internet? Because like from my side, it was very difficult to find body to co-create with and to uh, fit myself in the entrepreneurship the subject, etc. All my childhood. So I was wondering if you got like to meet people uh, in physical that were like you at this moment. No, that was actually during COVID. So he was actually in my. Okay. Uh, building like uh, in my apartment area so okay that I guess that was like a lucky moment in life for me uh, <laughs> finding him and like uh, you know uh, being his friend so yeah okay. he, he was one of the odd one outs that um, I couldn't really find a lot of more people like him at least till yeah so it was uh, it was the only one at some point yeah physically yes uh, but then obviously you expand and then you start meeting online people physically yeah 
And, and, and that's why I wanted to to ask you, like, how did you start meeting new friends and new people online? You were starting by publishing content on your blog and interacting pe with people who saw it, or you you were interacting with other contents from other people. How did you manage? Because right now for us, it seems a big easy because we used to um, do it in public, etc. But for people who never did, who have maybe like the imposter syndrome, uh, who maybe not feel like le legit to publish and to discuss with people, how did you face this and how did you uh, go behind it? Yeah, um, so I start for like the first thing I did was start a blog and then I made a commitment to writing one blog post a day for the first 100 days of starting my blog. And okay. I actually did that uh, for 100 days, which mm -hmm. may not have been the best idea because the thing about creating a blog on a personal website, like uh, on a www dot website, is that not mm -hmm. a lot of people are going to find it unless you know you're actively um, like distributing on a platform. But that that that's what brings me to my other point. It's like if I had to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't start a uh, a website and post over there. I would go onto Twitter or LinkedIn or other social mm -hmm. platforms where people are already creating post my content over there then have an email list where people can, you know, subscribe to. As for kind of getting over the imposter syndrome or uh, kind of not feeling, uh, you know, just great about it, I I just wanted to do it. So I guess like that yeah. really wasn't a thing for me. And I think if you have this, because uh, there's a lot of people who have this, like just push you to make the first one, to write the first things and after it will disappear. And it's very something that you have to handle and you have to feel like not stress about it like it will not change anything that you finish yeah. online something even if it's shit you know at some point and i wanted to to discuss about also one subject is that i think in in school in education since our childhood we the teachers show us to create things to write to uh to make exercise etc but not ready to interact with all the works from teammates etc and one of the learnings I got from like starting meeting some people online, etc., is that at the beginning, it's even more easier and profitable in terms of meetings, in terms of like learning and knowledge to start seeing more and interacting more with other like uh, thinkers content because it's not something that we used to do when we are young. You know, we are focusing on 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 things. Maybe we're gonna see like some related source, etc., but we are not. Um, the teachers are not going to teach us to analyze the uh, uh, other teamwork uh, uh, project and give our opinion, etc. And I think like interacting is much more important at the beginning than just creating. And it's fit you to create before. So I don't know if you felt this, but uh, I, I think you do because you tell me like you were like forcing yourself to read other blog, etc. But I think this is very like uh, something that fit you and that keeps you like learning new things. And that was a game changer for me. I mean, it's always good to be, you know, creating your own stuff, but I think you'll be able to get a lot more ideas and uh, be able to easily criticize your own ideas if you're, um, you know, sort of interacting with other people's ideas. And th that way you can actually, like, even um, get more reach sometimes because, like, if you're just posting on your, own, on your own, maybe not a lot of people are seeing your mm -hmm. stuff. But if you're posting some under someone else's, then mm -hmm. they might get and then they might repost yeah. it or do something like that. And, you know. it, it's even positive for, for the reach and uh, and all of this. It's true. Accountability is very important when you start like uh, dropping out and being by yourself. How did you manage this? Like what was like your driver? I, I know that, for example, uh, I went uh, off from a call with another dropout and he told me like his system was to say like, I'm going to do this. And if I don't do this, I will give like, one hundred dollars to my friend, and it's his own system. You know, how did you uh, do this? How did you manage your accountability to learn and to do things uh, without like having like a teacher or a institution that would tell you you have to do this? You know. Yeah, uh, I guess it was sort of mostly self motivated because of um, the situation in my life. Like I, I really wanted to change the way things okay. were, so that just pushed me to do it every single day. Uh, mm -hmm. But then I can create some challenges for myself, you know, without having to spend one hundred dollars, uh, mm -hmm. and sort of just impose them on myself sometimes, um, like the one hundred blog posts um, in one hundred days challenge. Like that was just mm -hmm. purely for me, um, and yeah. n 
a lot of people didn't even know about it. Like nobody knew that I was doing it. I, it was only in my mind that I'm going to do it. It's true that there's people who publish the challenge. I have some friends who do this, like on LinkedIn, you want to post like every day. And he mentioned it like before starting the, the year, the new year, he was saying like, okay, I'm going to post like every day. And if I'm not posting every day, uh, tell me and, uh, I, I'm not good en enough and you can mention it and you can insult me, etc. Like, it was really like sharing like his like uh, motivation for this new year about like uh, publishing every day and you make it public. At some point, it's your own stamp. You can make it public, you can make it private. It's your choice. Like it's how you will respond to him, to this, you know. I, I was like uh, thinking about that. So like the moment you decided to drop it out. So I think the moment you realized that there were no... No other option is when you experiment new things on on the COVID this death period and you went back to school and you realized that you were pretty like um, blocked at some point. But how did you manage with uh, families, with friends to, to announce them? I know that from India, it's not very common to drop out. I have a lot of friends uh, who got like very challenged. It's uh, maybe I'm wrong, but they told me like it was very like bad thing here to dropping out, etc. Uh, how did you manage to announce it and to live it, uh, knowing this? Yeah, that's, it's actually, you're totally right about the sort of stigma around having to go to school and at least having a high school degree. Like, yeah, it's really considered, like, you're, it doesn't matter, like, what you accomplish. If you don't have, like, a high school degree, people will be, like, um, just genuinely assume that you're illiterate. They'll, like, consider um, having, like, a degree as part of illiteracy, which doesn't really make sense, right? Uh, but it, it is the way it is. So I had, um, I definitely had like a lot of friction with my parents. Um, mm -hmm. As I told you about like just my thoughts around that time, like I started to feel like I wasn't really, like I didn't really want to be with these people in school. Like I didn't mm -hmm. really want to hang out with them. So with friends, it was sort of like easy but with quote unquote friends, I should say. But when my parents, like we did have like a lot of heated arguments and eventually like they just saw that I was, doing these other cool things online and they saw that mm -hmm. they could actually have like a stable income from there. So, uh, they, okay. uh, they agreed in the end to uh, meet up. Okay. Yeah. So the fact that you already have plane already have revenue yet to tell me, uh, was something that put you more legitimacy to, to make the choice, right? Yeah. Every society have like, uh, their, uh, their kind of sensibility to this. Uh, I was, th I was talking to uh, people from, uh, from the Valley, from California, for myself. Uh, some of them were from a family of tech entrepreneurs. So for them, it was normal. Even it was good to drop out at some point. Uh, in France, in Paris, um, education is free. So it's pretty strange to not go in education because it's free. So why not? You know, it's a bit like uh, um, not wealthy and you can have like barrier, like even for fundraising, etc. It's more easy to raise if you have like a good degree at some point, etc. So uh, over here, at least like, yeah, as I said, you just, uh, it's kind of like you need to go and complete high school uh, to actually do something in life. But um, yeah, it's pretty weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. And from the moment you, you drop out, you told me like um, you were already experimenting things. You were already like discussing with fellows online. Um, you told me you were already maybe earning a bit of money with the revenue. What was your situation? So I started working on AirChat with Noel and Brian. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that was the thing that might have convinced my parents more of. Like, um, But yeah, it, what I was working on was basically that and my own blog and my own podcast and other stuff right. I was doing online. So yeah. And how did you go to work with Naval and Brian on LChat? Like, what is the story behind it? It was sort of serendipitous, really. Uh, one of my friends, Brett Hall, he invited me to this app that Noel was building in January of last year. And uh, at that time, like, AirChat wasn't even open. It was a closed beta app, and they had very few users. Noel and I got into a private chat, and... Uh, we just started, you know, talking and I, got, I introduced myself and later on I just proposed to, you know, work on the team, work on our chat team because I just thought that they were building an amazing product that I wanted to be a part of. So I proposed if I could work on it and he basically agreed. Awesome. And uh, oh, did you meet like Brett? It was on Twitter. So I was, I actually replied to one or I asked, I asked him a question on Twitter. Um, okay. 
but and then he he dm'd me and then we sort of became friends but we were friends like much before the air chat thing happened and i had him okay. on my he was one of the first guests okay. on my podcast as well okay so being online and like interacting with people like we mentioned was like a game changer for you definitely yeah i'd say so okay Awesome, awesome. So today you're working on AirChat. Like, what is your mission on AirChat and what is your goal? I think the main goal of it is to facilitate free and civil conversations on the internet, which is okay. lacking right now. Um, mm -hmm. So if you see, like, Twitter and other mediums, like, uh, on Instagram, like, mo it's mostly about likes and followers and you post photos. It's not much about conversations. On Twitter, mm -hmm. like, people do have conversations to some extent but it does a lot of shouting because it's a text-based medium and um the thing with airchat is because you can hear your own voice you sort of become more civil in that way because you're hearing what you're saying before posting it to the person mm -hmm. we're having the conversation okay so uh we really want to facilitate that and be the place where uh, civil conversations happen on the internet um so that's like kind of the broad goal okay and you help them from zero to today yeah i definitely didn't help them from uh the start from zero uh but okay. i joined the team when we were still in private beta so uh then i do a lot of things because we we're in a startup we we're kind of lean as well we a few people just working on a lot of things so it's okay. it's really fun and yeah i do like sometimes customer support and uh, I do marketing in our, um, like, uh, post our social media posts as well. Okay. And you're working a full remote, right? Yes. Okay. And the plan is to stay in full remote or you, you do a chat plan to go, like, on hybrid or office, maybe? Um, I don't know. Uh, right, right now, I think, like, our team is uh, scattered around the world. So that's also perhaps a good thing. Uh, we're all very asynchronous and unscheduled. And so your YouTube video, and you were posting like a, a fun tweet about it like few, a few days ago, about the fact that uh, your YouTube channel basically attract people like way more older than you. Like uh, I think like 30 was like 30 years old was the, the average age. It's true that your topic are about like philosophical science and this kind of stuff, very deep conversation, etc. It's not something that people from our age 20s, uh, we say like, I want to, to know more about this. How did you want to start being like interested and maybe passionate about this kind of topics? Sure. Uh, so I, I picked up this book called The Beginning of Infinity by David Deutsch. And uh, okay. that was like, it, it was completely like mind blowing to me at the time I read it. And it still is like every day. Sometimes I discover like a new thing in that book and like in that philosophy and it's uh it's really like it's just completely different to what i used to think and it just changed my mind on a lot of things so from there like i got interested in um epistemology which is the theory of knowledge and uh, started talking uh, about all these things and started writing about them so i don't know it was just like these ideas just seem fundamentally interesting i, I know so it's not from a book that you really appreciate and that maybe like uh, make you change your mind in several type of things and you you started like being more interesting and you started your podcast your your article about it yeah i mean the book was like the book was underlying the whole philosophy thing so what can you tell us if possible a bit vulgarize about like this this book and like uh how it changed your your way of perceiving things sure so one of the kind of like my favorite lessons or like my favorite understandings from the book was um, this idea of the principle of optimism uh, okay. which David Deutsch defines as all evils are caused by insufficient knowledge if you think about it there's this like momentous dichotomy that if a thing is not forbidden by the laws of physics then it's mm -hmm. possible given the right knowledge so it's our duty to create that knowledge and to fix the evils in the world and to constantly keep making progress um, and make progress indefinitely, basically, and uh, keep improving our lives. Um, so that was one of the most inspiring pieces uh, in that book, but there's definitely um, a lot of other stuff that... Uh, okay. Yeah. And you, you invited people who discuss about this topic. Um, like, how do you manage like to discuss about this topic at your young age? Maybe for them, it's strange. They are not used to... 
uh, discuss and be invited with like uh, uh, some some guys from our generation. No, it's actually pretty easy. Like I, all the people have invited to my podcast, like and uh, you know talk to privately as well. Um, most of them, like like we we just talk like we're equals, right? It's not mm-hmm. like no matter how old they are. Um, they treat me as equals in the conversation and there's no like mm-hmm. argument from authority, which which is another thing I like about the beginning of infinity is like um, there is no authority. Being older doesn't mean that you have, uh, doesn't, need, mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that you know more. So yeah, like it's like this idea that we're all equally um, ignorant about things and uh, we can learn from sharing ideas. So I've never felt like I... You know, like I don't. These people are s- somewhat like they have more authority than me, mm-hmm. and so, like I've never felt that way. What what advice would you give, like to to someone who maybe feel like misaligned with like the current educational or career path? If there's like a, a little Arjun who is like with a cool kid, but definitely not a kid that share the same uh, interest, what would you give to them? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of giving advice but I guess Mm -hmm. like one thing I'd say or um, I guess like what they want to keep in mind is just like what is it that they really want to do right Uh, if they're not feeling good about their situation then they just try to solve that fix that problem just following your curiosity following your interests and see where that leads you you don't have to have Mm -hmm. a career path defined for you I think that's like a dangerous thing to do actually because uh, in this ever-changing world where where not only your interests are constantly changing, but the world outside you is always changing, mm-hmm. right? And so you don't want to, like, go on this fixed traditional path that someone else has set for you yeah. and just, you know, follow it blindly. Instead, you want to mm-hmm. work on things that are interesting to you, problems on, that are interesting to you, try to solve them. <laughs> you don't want to have, mm-hmm. like, an end goal fixed in mind. Yeah, I don't think that's a good thing. It evolved with you growing up, with the society, etc. So it can be fixed and forever, you know. And I was thinking, like, me, I'm from, like, a little village on the southwest of France. And when I was, like, frustrated about, like, this kind of feeling, this kind of thing that I was hanging out with friends, were very cool, my childhood uh, brother, etc. But was very not uh, feeling myself with uh, the topic that was interesting. Uh, I took the decision to moving out to Paris, like, uh, the city, uh, the capital of France. Uh, which is very more active in terms of entrepreneurship and like you can meet like much more people uh, and it's very fed me to see people uh, live physically I was thinking with you you mentioned a lot like online version even with air chat it's all about online do you think like being full online uh, can still feed you in the long term or you have to see people in physics sometimes or do you manage it from your side like do you have like some friend you see in physics to discuss this kind of topic? It's not that fulfilling to always just be online and talk to online friends, at least till mm-hmm. now, because like virtual reality hasn't gone that far yet. But maybe in the future, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, maybe in the future, it's more immersive um, and it's better. Then you can just be online most of the time. Mm-hmm. But I do go outside. So the whole, I, I don't have a lot of friends over here that I talk to about um, mm-hmm. these ideas. Um, but I do like to go outside and, you know, get in the sun. I like to run a lot. So that's one of the okay. most, like, that. that's when I'm, like, out a lot. So, you know, going for, like, three-hour runs or more than that. Okay. Uh, it was very cool to discuss. Honestly, we we scrolled uh, we scrolled all your life from, uh, from the beginning to now. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to add something. Uh... No, I think uh, what you're doing is amazing. I, uh, you know, joined the quest and it's, like... Um, I think it's pretty cool what you're doing and you're building a community and now starting this podcast. So keep it up. I think you're doing great things. And yeah, like, uh, thanks for having me. And it was really fun talking. With pleasure, with pleasure. And you're welcome if you want to go in France, uh, in Paris. And uh, thank you very much for coming. And uh, yeah, see you soon. And I hope you are the best with uh, Air Chat and all your next adventure. Thanks. You too. <laughs>